Hi, so I was asked the simple question as to how can I post an assignment in Google Classroom so that my students can then submit their work to me and I can see it and grade it in Classroom. So just very simple for this tutorial, we're going to be creating an assignment um, and specifically the request that I received um, was what is the best way um, to create an assignment in Classroom for students to submit a written response. So I'm gonna go over two possible options. Um, there are more, but these would be the, the top two that I would recommend. So the first one is using a plain old Google Doc. Um, students are very familiar with Google Docs, which sometimes is a blessing, sometimes a curse. Um, it is important that you know with Google Docs that students will have the tool feature available to them of the spell check. If you are looking to assess their spelling um, remotely, it's kind of hard in the classroom. I actually go around and turn off the spelling for them. Um, you could ask them to turn off the spell check tool, um, but let's be honest, remotely, not sure how much that's going to uh, help. So spelling may just have to be something that is not, is not necessarily assessed or we're more flexible with if you are using Google Docs. So to get to Google Docs, if you just go to your Google search engine, usually in the top right corner, there are the nine square grid and Docs can be accessed here just by clicking there, or you can just go and type in Google Docs. Either of them works. So I'm just gonna show you this way because that's usually the way people end up doing. And then let's click on Docs. And you're going to click even if um, first making sure you're logged in with your school email address is really important because that's what's connected to your Google Classroom. If you accidentally go into a personal Gmail and make it in there, it's not going to help you when you're trying to post it from your school email. So click on go to Google Docs on the personal side. And then we're just going to click on a blank doc. Okay. It's important to title your doc immediately. I always forget. Um, so let's just do sample response questions. Um, whatever title you would give it, um, just be really specific, especially thinking about if we're going to be long term with any kind of remote learning. You may even want to incorporate the date into your title. All right. So for this, you, I like to format my Google Docs if it is a question answer using tables. Um, it helps to organize it more looking like a worksheet that students are used to. So the first thing I do is a table, just a two column, one row table for their name. If you do not put this here, and you ever down the road want to print out any student work, it will not print out with their name on it. It needs to actually be on the document. When they submit something to you, it submits automatically in their name. So you see it in classroom, whether their name is on the doc or not. But if you ever wanted to print just this paper, you would want the name to be on it, trust me. So it's just a good habit to get into. Um, so we made a spot for their name. It's pretty clear that they can click there. If you, if your students are so new to using docs, you could push, click here to type here. Um, but then they would need to backspace that. I think it's pretty clear, but, um, use, you know, your students best. So use your own, your own discretion. So the next thing that I do is I create another table. So I am just going to create a table pretending that we have three questions. So for each of the three questions, we have an answer. So we need six rows. Stick with me, you're gonna see what I'm doing. So question one will go here, question two can go here, and question three could go here. Um, I then would type in my questions, you know, 
why is the sky blue? Um, how old was the grandmother in the story? And see the spelling? They should be able to, because it underlines for them, they should be able to just fix that for themselves. Um, and where did the story take place? If you were curious about how to turn the spell check off, um, that is under the tools and spelling and grammar. And then you would just have them uncheck these things that you don't want them to get the clues on. Again, I teach fifth grade. I don't know if I would trust my students to actually uncheck that and remotely. Um, we are very limited as far as our access to what they control on their computer. So I'm just gonna make the font a little bit bigger. And then I like to, for mine, I like to highlight um, or at least color the boxes where the questions are. So I highlight that and then I go up here to where the background color is and I put them in a color so that it's clear. So I'm gonna just use yellow. So clicking and dragging, going up to that pink can and just clicking on yellow. So it is pretty obvious that their answer would go in the white space. What is nice about Google Docs is again, you have ample space. So if they needed more room, it expands with them similar to um, what they're used to on, I don't wanna talk about it, but standardized testing, how it just gets bigger for them. Um, so then let's say we wanted to post this assignment. It's important that you know in Google Docs and anything Google application online, they change, um, all changes are saved automatically. So just look up top. There is no stressing out looking to save like we used to have to do on Word and other applications. No stressing out. It does it automatically for you every like so often. It's like seconds, it's not even minutes. So it's saved. I'm going to leave this tab and go back to my fake classroom. When you're in your classroom, you're usually on the stream. So that just basically any action that happens on your classroom is recorded there. If you posted an announcement or if you did an assignment, all of the things are just kept there. It gets kind of cluttered. So what I like to do in classwork is I like to create some headings for myself. So you can do that by going to topic. And that basically creates an overarching heading that assignments can be organized into. So if you have any students with any organizational um, concerns that they need assistance with that, it really breaks it down for them. Otherwise it can get pretty overwhelming and build up quickly. So um, I'm gonna call this response to reading. Okay. And then I'm gonna go add. And you see that really big, nice title? All of my assignments would go under there. Let's pretend that I have another heading here just so we can see what it would look like. And um, doo -doo -doo -doo. what could another one be? Let's just put math, just as an example. If you had that all living in the same, same classroom, you'd have separate sections for them. So now let's get to what the request actually was, which was how to put an assignment up in classroom. You're gonna go to create and you're going to click on assignment. And when you do that, you get to this screen. We're gonna type the title of it, which I did sample response questions. And if you had any specific directions you wanted to appear before students clicked on the assignment, you would type them here. But then you're going to click on the little add paperclip here. It is in your Google Drive, so you're going to click there. And it should be popping up as the most recent. It's right there. Now, here's where it's super important. Right now, it just says that the students can view it cool, they can see it. That's not what we want. 
it says they could edit it. If you clicked on students can edit it, that means all of your students in your classroom can edit that one document. You want to click on make a copy for each student. So over here, you're going to see that you, if you had multiple classes and you wanted to assign this to more than one class, you could click on them and check them. If you're differentiating and you only want this to be available to certain students, you could click on those students or click off certain students. Um, that's really helpful. Um, so you can give students different assignments. Um, you can give a point value or you can say that it is ungraded. Now, the due date. It's cool that you can set up a due date. The one thing I am going to just let you know that if you have parents who are connected to their students' accounts and you set up a due date and it passes, those parents will be able to get an email, most likely, unless you turn the setting off, that's going to say that their student has missing work and that may cause a freak out. Don't want it. Um, I keep track of my own due dates. I don't like to put this on there because I do have parents connected to my account. And most of the time, I wouldn't say it's a freak out. So here's where that topic thing is. So where do we want this to live when it's posted for the students? Not in math, we want it to go to in response to reading. So I'm gonna, over here, you could click assign or you can actually click to schedule it in advance. So if you wanted to schedule it on a date in advance in a certain time that you want it to be posted, you can put that in here. So I want it to post right now, so I'm just gonna click Assign. And then once my student has gone through and has answered the questions, it will come back into me right here. So View Assignment. And right now it says my fake student, it's still assigned, she has not turned it in. Once she opens up in hers, she'll get the doc and she will then be able to click to turn in. It is important that you monitor this, especially if classroom is new to your students. They may be done, but they may not click to turn in. So you can always peek in on their work um, and see how they're doing with it. All right. So with that, that's just one way. Um, that we could assign a response questions in an assignment in Google Docs. The other way is through, so I'm just gonna go back to Google, is through something called Google Forms. So you can just type in Google Forms and go right to it here. So Google Forms is more of a form. Um, but what ends up happening when you create a Google form is it's kind of more of, let me see if I can show you a quick example here. So I had created a form for check-ins for my students that they take in the morning and they answer these questions. And then I then can look at the responses here. For written responses, I don't think forms is the best. It's better if you are doing forms for things that are multiple choice. So let me just go back here. And if we did a form that was, for instance, a short answer, we would title it, right? Sample response questions. And then there are multiple kinds of question types. You would do that as a paragraph or a short answer. Um, you would want, if you don't want students to be able to skip over it, you would click required. And then you could share this the same way that we shared our others. So you'd go into classwork, click create, click assignment, and then you would put your title in, instructions, add for Google Drive, and the form would still come up here. So that's another way 
to possibly collect a written response. Um, I do feel as though students write more and write better when it is in a doc. I would leave forms for when it is more of a multiple choice question. And the reason is because, and if you're interested in this, um, I can do another tutorial for you. But the reason is because you can actually set up an answer key. So if I wanted to go through and I had my question, what color is the sky? When I go through here, notice I don't have an answer key option, but if I go up to settings and I click on quizzes, if I make it a quiz, Google can actually auto grade things for you. Um, and I would click on answer key, give it a point value, click on the correct answer. So Google for teachers, Google Forms rather for teachers is really helpful, but I don't think it is the best option for a lengthier written response. Um, I would stick with what we just went over, which is the Google Docs. If you're interested in learning more about Google Forms, please check out the other video that is already on my channel. Uh, and if you have any other questions, please reach out.